Good morning, everyone. Did Jesus die on this? That is the topic of this video. Let's explore the facts. It is assumed that Jesus died on a cross. Is this true? It is common knowledge that the cross is the primary symbol for Christianity. We see the cross inside of churches. We see the cross on top of church steeples. We see people wearing, that is Christians wearing the cross as jewelry. Now, let's look at the origins of the cross. This is very important to know where the cross came from. The cross has its origins in ancient Chaldea, Babylon, and it was the symbol of the Babylonian god Tammuz, the symbol of the T or Tau. In neighboring lands uh, such as Egypt, it was used there. We see it in the Ankh. It appeared in Christianity in the middle of the third century. We also saw the cross used in the Nazi regime in the form of a swastika. Concerning first century followers of Christ, author J.F. Hurst, in his book, History of the Christian Church, volume 1, page 366, he says this, There was no use of the crucifix and no material representation of the cross. The New Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 4, on page 486, says, The representation of Christ's redemptive death on Golgotha does not occur in the symbolic art of the first Christian centuries. The early Christians, influenced by the Old Testament prohibition of graven images, were reluctant to depict even the instrument of the Lord's passion, that is, the instrument upon which he died. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, when I read my Bible, I see the word cross in there. So, what's going on here? Well, that is a translation bias. The word cross comes from the Latin word crux, and crux, you've heard the expression crucifixion. The word crux is a Latin word, and Latin is not one of the languages of the Bible. There are only three languages of the Bible, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So when you see in your Bible the word cross there, that is a translation bias. And I'm going to show you this in a few moments. So if one does their own research, and I highly encourage this, they will discover that the cross is a pagan symbol. Christianity has adopted a pagan symbol. There's something else that I found uh, quite interesting is the Greek god Pan. Let me show you a uh, representation of the Greek god Pan here. So I'm going to go over to Google. Pan, in ancient Greek religion and mythology, Pan is the god of the wild, shepherds and flocks, rustic music and impromptu, and companion of the nymphs. Now, let's look at an image of Pan. This is where the image of Satan, the double, comes from. It comes from the Greek god Pan. Right there. Now, does Pan have a symbol? Let's find out. Greek god Pan. I'm going to type in symbol. There it is. Right here. This is the symbol of the Greek god Pan. What do you see there? There's a cross. Somewhere along the line, Christianity has allowed the infiltration of a pagan symbol. And as I mentioned earlier, it crept in about the middle of the 3rd century. No one stopped to question, challenge, or investigate. They just allowed it. And many today don't even question it. It is assumed that it represents Christianity and Christ. And it does not. It is a pagan symbol. So let's talk about what Jesus died on. And I have a few scriptures lined up here for you. And I'm going to use the King's James Version. There are some who, they love the King's James Version. I don't like it because I don't like the thieves and thous and no one speaks that way. But for just being courteous and out of common courtesy, I'll use the King's James Version here. Okay. Now, when it goes to Mark chapter 8, verse 34, we read, And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So we see the word cross mentioned there. Okay. 
This is the King James Version. Another scripture, save thyself and come down from the cross. That's that uh, criminal talking to Jesus. But there's the word cross. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The Apostle Paul writes, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So we see the word cross there. And this saved is not saved with regards to eternal life, but being saved to a resurrection. It is the power of God. That's the key expression right there. Okay, But there's the word cross. If we go over to Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, we read, And he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. So we see the word cross there as well. Now, let's go over to the Greek interlinear and look at those four scriptures. And I'm going to take you over there, right here. Okay. I already have Mark 8.34 pulled up. Hopefully you can see all of that. Let's move this over just a little bit. Okay. And we have the Greek right here in the black, right there in the middle. We have the English translation in the red. And if we come over to where we find the word cross, right over here. Right here, we see the word cross, right there. We see the Greek. But this here is the word staron or starus. What is that? What is staron or starus? Starus is a tree. It's a pole. It's a tree with its branches cut off. And what's left over is an upright stake or pole. Not one of these. Not a cross. Jesus did not die on a cross with his arms outstretched left and right. He died like this. He was nailed up like that. So we see the Greek word here, translated cross, but it's starun or staros. Let's look at uh, the other scripture at Mark 15, 13. And I'm going to type it in here. And I encourage you to do your own research. And they're showing you how you can do it. So we have Mark 15, 30. Let's pull that over. Save yourself having descended from the cross. But look at the word. Staru. An upright pole. A stake. Not a cross. This is a translator's bias. Another scripture. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 18. Here we go. And I think you can see it from here, right here. See the word cross there? Here's a Greek word that a bias translated into cross, but there's staru. A staru, as I said previously, is an upright pole or stake cut from a tree. Now, the next one, let's go to Matthew chapter 10, 38. There's a Greek word cross, and there's that word again. Staron, Starus, an upright pole or stake. Now, there's some other scriptures that I'll bring to your attention. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a what? A tree. Elsewhere, we saw the word cross. This is still King James Version. So, Jesus died on a tree, a staru not a cross. There's more. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 39. And we read there the King James Version. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. The Apostle Paul writes there, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus hung on a tree. It wasn't a cross. It was a staru. We will see this right here. Now also in the Greek, we'll see the word xylon, that Jesus hung on a xylon, that is a tree. So if you go to the Greek interlinear for Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. All right, uh... See here, everyone, this is a, a curse for it has been written, 
cursed everyone hanging on. Let me get this in frame. A tree. The word there, here's the Greek word, Cylon, a tree. So one must understand that it was a translator's bias that put the word cross in there. And I'm going to take you back to crooks, crucifixion. It is a Latin word. Latin is not one of the languages of the Bible. So think about that. Now, there are many Christians who would say, well, it doesn't matter. What's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal. Truth is a big deal. Truth matters. This is something, in my opinion, should not be overlooked. Because if one thinks about it, it is paganism. It is idolatry. Now think about this too. Suppose that Jesus came on the scene during the Industrial Revolution. And the instrument upon which he was executed was by firing squad. Guns. Would we see today, on top of church steeples, the symbol of the gun? Will we see people wearing about their necks in jewelry, the gun? Suppose a, a friend or a loved one was accused falsely like Christ was, and that loved one or friend's instrument of death was, say, a bow and arrow or a firing squad. Would you be okay with others wearing that as some uh, symbol for your dead loved one or friend? Hopefully not. But here's something that we should take into consideration and take very seriously. And this is found at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The cross is a pagan symbol, and it is an idol. Why do Christians cling so tightly to it? I'm going to answer that question before I conclude this video. And if we go to Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5, we have the command. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So, the cross is a graven image. It is an idol. Now, why do so many Christians cling tenaciously to this symbol of the cross? Well, first of all, Satan is the god of this world. It benefits him to get individuals to become idol worshippers. That has been the history of man since man has been on earth. We have this knack of creating our own gods whether they're graven images or uh, persons that uh, represent, say, Jesus. You know, you guys have seen these portrayals of Jesus in art, film, and literature as being a flesh and blood man, have you not? Those are false portrayals. Those are false images. Those are false Christs. We've seen um, paintings of God being uh, an old uh, white man, right? Those are images it's disobedience to God. Christianity, and thus Christians, if you hold on to that cross, and you got it in your hand, if you see it in church buildings, if you see... I, I watched a video yesterday of a well-known uh, megachurch uh, preacher, and behind him was an elaborate, beautifully adorned cross. It's a pagan symbol. Many Christians have no problem being disobedient to God, yet... Many of them, as I've said before, will do this. They'll point fingers at others, and I say, look at what you're doing. You venerate the cross. It benefits the God of this world to deceive the world, to be out of worshipers, to be disobedient to God. So, did Jesus die on a cross? No. 
Jesus died on a xylon, a tree, with its branches cut off, and it became a staru, or an upright stake or pole, not a cross. Do your own research. And this is for the sake of the truth. The information is there. All one has to do is go out and find it, research it. And I highly recommend, too, that before you do that, approach your father in prayer. Go into some private place out of the uh, eyesight and earshot of others and ask the father to uh, direct you. Because you want his direction. You want his wisdom, his understanding, and his knowledge on this. Not that of men. Men cannot be trusted. Christianity cannot be trusted. Christianity is okay with being disobedient to God and venerating a pagan symbol. This is Orange Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.